I was part of the mob, part of the Colombo family. We had a certain policy that we adhered to. We never, ever bothered women or children. Never. They never suffered for any of our discretions. The only time that might have happened is if that child, a son, you know, like I was, son of my father, I mean, but I was an adult at that point, but if that person was involved in the life and made a conscious and willing decision to be part of the street life. Other than that, hands off. We did not go after women and children. We did not go after relatives. Hands off, we had that policy, and until today, I don't know that it's been violated. Not to my knowledge. Certainly during my time, I don't know that it had been violated. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Everything is very good, very blessed on this end. As always, I give God all the praise, honor, glory, and thanksgiving for that. Just returned from Australia, great trip with my wife and youngest daughter, Julia. We had a great time, spent I think 10 days there, had two big events uh, that went extremely well in conversation with Michael Francis. Love the Australian people, I have many friends there. And uh, we did get to see some of the sites. I think it was my fourth trip there, but uh, it's a great town, really, uh, both Sydney and Melbourne. Enjoyed it very much, and I'll probably be back there in the next year or so. Uh, also, the reason I have uh, Francie Swine in my book up here now, because there's been an increased demand for the book. I think people are into government, a lot of stuff going on here in the United States, and people want some answers. The answers are in my book for what's going on. You know, it's a shame. Republicans can't get their act together. We still don't have a Speaker of the House as of this recording. Dem who knows? You know, it's sometimes a shame that we're being governed by people that just can't get their act together. They really can't. If you ran your house the way they run the government, everybody in this country would be in trouble. I mean it. And especially now, during times of strife like this, it's all I'm going to say is to get into the politics. I'm going to leave that out. And Franzi's wine, we have an increased demand for it. And the holidays are coming up. We're going to be doing some specials. We are now just about in every state. We're now in Canada. We're going to be in Australia soon. We're really moving. Uh, we have an announcement on a big, big, big account that's taken us over. We're very excited about that. So we're on the move. What else? Cuba. We had a great, great, great YouTube live. Answered a lot of questions with the, um, uh, the host of the uh, whole trip. And I think a lot of people are excited about going. We have a lot of people that signed up already. Hopefully, you know, with the, the events that are going on in the world, it won't be uh, postponed. We take things day to day. But as of now, everything is set for the 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th of December. Very excited about that. So Cuba, I'm excited. It's going to be a whole history of the mob in Cuba. We're going to visit all the locations, stay at the Hotel Nacional, which is where this big conference occurred. And I think back in, I think it was 1946, but we're going to talk about that. And uh, really looking forward to it. So um, there's a link to the website. Go on there. If you haven't signed up already and you are interested, it's a once in a lifetime experience. I promise promise you that. Go look into the website, uh, follow the link, and you'll get all the information that you need. Uh, December 30th, I'm going to be in Providence, Rhode Island. Very excited about that also. Big history of the mob in both Boston and Providence. Some of the people I knew there, we're going to be talking about it that evening. Uh, tickets are on sale now. I think there's a link here for the tickets also. Very excited about that. Love the people of uh, Providence and of Boston. Even though I'm not a Red Sox fan, uh, I do love the people there. It's a great city, and Providence also. I've been there many times. So that's December 30th. Again, there's a link here, I think, to buy tickets. What are we going to talk about today? You know, people, I can't avoid this anymore. I have uh, been getting so many requests asking for my opinion on what's going on in Israel. You can't avoid it. I mean, you can't turn the news on, you know, any longer without seeing this on every news channel. It's all about, you know, what happened in Israel over the past week, 10 days. And, uh, you know, when you have a platform, people are interested in what you have to say about it. And, you know, I want to stay out of the politics of it. Uh, I really do, because I'm going to be honest with you. And I think I speak for everybody that wants to be honest. I can't speak to the entire history 
history of what was going on and what continues to go on in the Middle East. It's very complicated. You know, the, the uh, disagreements over the land in the Middle East, I think it's going to go on forever. It's been going on for so long, since as far back as we can remember, it's going to go on forever. As a Christian, I'm going to be totally honest with you, and uh, one who adheres to biblical teachings, uh, I have to say that the Jews occupied that land uh, from early on, way back to the days of Abraham, maybe even before that. And they've never not occupied that land. That much I can tell you. They've never not occupied that land. Now, I'm not speaking against the Palestinians with respect to that. I'm not saying they have no right to, to be in that land. I'm not saying that at all. I am only saying that according to biblical teaching and history, and I think the historical record, even outside of the Bible, will bear this out. That land has always been occupied by the Jewish people. It always has been. So we have to look at it that way. Once again, I'm not saying the Palestinians are not entitled to that land. As a matter of fact, I know the Jewish people have made many concessions giving them, you know, uh, a right to settle in that land. But again, that's politics. There's uh, heated, you know, opinions on both sides. And I'm not going to get into all of that. But let's get into what's happening now. Look, I am against terrorism of any kind. Now, let me, let me tell you this. One of the reasons why, okay, or many of the reasons why, number one, I'm a father of seven, and I'm a grandfather to seven. Terrorist activities among children is just disgusting and despicable to me. I can't even listen to it. I can't think about it. It's an atrocity beyond human belief. That's how I feel about that. That's number one. Number two, I was part of the mob, part of the Colombo family. We had a certain policy that we adhered to. We never, ever bothered women or children. Never. They never suffered for any of our discretions. The only time that might have happened is if that child, a son, you know, like I was, son of my father, I mean, but I was an adult at that point, but if that person was involved in the life and made a conscious and willing decision to be part of the street life. Other than that, hands off. We did not go after women and children. We did not go after relatives. Hands off, we had that policy and until today, I don't know that it's been violated. Not to my knowledge. Certainly during my time, I don't know that it had been violated. So we had that decency about us. We had that policy about us. So now let's go back to what happened in Israel a couple of Saturdays ago. I mean, women and children were attacked. And it was barbarians what happened. I mean, they were attacked. Children were beheaded. This is a fact. Please, no propaganda to say it didn't happen. I have friends in Israel, okay? I know people there. I know people in politics. This really happened. Children were abducted. They were murdered. They were beheaded. Women were raped. Hostages were taken. This really happened. Innocent people at a concert were gunned down. Several Americans, they had nothing to do with the occupation of that land. They were killed also. Random, innocent people. I am against that in any circumstance, no matter what. There's no justification for that, as far as I'm concerned. None. Now, were the Palestinian people responsible for that? No, I don't believe so. I do not. Were the Hamas terrorist groups responsible for that? That's what I have to believe. That's what all the reporting is. Hamas claimed credit for it. They're laughing about it. They're bragging about it. They're, they're reveling in it. So yeah, it really happened because they're a terrorist group. Hamas, Hezbollah, terrorist groups. It's horrible. Listen, I go back to 9-11 when 3,000 people were destroyed, killed, buildings torn down. You know, I go back to that. These are terrorist activities. Nobody should ever, ever, ever support terrorism in any way, shape or form, especially against children and especially against innocent people. To me, these are cowards. They're cowards. You want to fight, fight the military. You want to go after people, go after the adults that are causing things like this. You don't go after innocent people in any way, shape or form. And let me tell you something. I really feel for what happened to the Israeli people. I really do. To the innocent people, I feel for the hostages. Do I feel for the murdered children? Well, of course, but you know, praise God, hopefully they're all in heaven at this point in time and enjoying something far beyond whatever we can realize here on earth. But I also, I also have a heart for the Palestinian people. Israel has now given them a warning, evacuate, get out of town because we're gonna be doing some damage. And they're giving these people some time, but is it enough? I mean, come on. I read in the paper today that there are about 5,000 uh, Palestinian women that are gonna give birth this month. 
and they're on the move. They have no medical supplies. You know, they don't know where they're going to be able to give birth to their child. They have no food. Water was cut off. Electricity was cut off. Is there humanitarian efforts being made to try to help them? Yes, but will they be able to? There's a lot of people, thousands of them. These are innocent people caught in the middle of who knows what. Do we know the politics that are going on here? Do we really understand why Hamas chose to attack Israel at this point. Who's pulling the strings? What's going on? Is Iran involved? I have to think that they are. They hate Israel. They hate the United States. So we have to believe, and I think we know, that they're funding Hamas and Hezbollah to a great degree. And these are terrorist organizations. Should they be wiped out? Yes, I believe so. Anyone that performs a terrorist act should be held accountable to it. Now, Israel's got a problem because there are innocent people in the middle of this. What are they going to do about it? You know, as a Christian, it's very, very hard to say, go in there and just, you know, do the damage you're supposed to do stamp out all the terrorists. But in the meantime, you're going to be killing, murdering, harming innocent Palestinians. It's unavoidable. The terrorists are going to use them as human shields. They've been known to do that in the past. They're going to do it again. So it's very hard for me to advocate going in there and, and stamping out the terrorists when it's not the terrorists alone. It's, this is a very, very difficult situation. And you know, look, I'm no stranger to violence, people. Look, I've seen it, and it's ugly. I'll never forget, you know. First time I saw something really ugly, it was with a dear friend of mine, Adi Entrada. I can mention his name. He was a Jewish guy, but his, his ethnicity had nothing to do with this. He was a, a strong friend of my father's, a strong friend of mine. When my dad went away, he kind of took me under his his wing and uh, his family was wonderful to me. He was like a second father. I'm not going to get into the reasons because I told this story once probably a couple of years ago, but I did tell it. And Artie got brutally, brutally beaten up and murdered as a result of something within the mob confines that happened. Uh, again, I'm not going to get into it. So I go to his funeral, you know, when I heard about it. I was young. I was like 19 years old, 20 years old, something like that. And when I walked into the door of his funeral, I'll never forget, his sister, who I loved and who loved me, the casket was closed, came right up to me and she said, Michael, Look what these animals did to my brother. And she took me to the casket and she opened it up and he was unrecognizable. It was so ugly that honestly, I wasn't prepared for that. It got to me, it was a brutal sight. That was the first time that I really witnessed a brutal death. And then obviously being part of that life for, you know, as long as I was, I, I saw it again. And it's ugly. It's ugly. Death is ugly. Brutality is ugly. And contrary to what most people believe, as a member of that life, we didn't always advocate murder and brutality as a first cause of action. We did not. Some guys did. I know you're going to say, Michael, Roy DeMeo. Okay. Roy DeMeo was Roy DeMeo. Whether he was a member of the mafia or not, he was who he was. The mafia didn't make Roy DeMeo a serial killer. This is who he was. Greg Scarpia can kind of say the same thing. Some people just don't have a regard for human life. They're terrorists also. You can name them as being a terrorist in, in some way, shape, or form but it's ugly. We would use that as a last cause of action within the confines of our life. I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying we were right. I'm copping to it. It was wrong. It was still murder, okay? But at least we had some humanity behind it. These terrorists don't. They don't. And because of that, it's hard for me to justify the actions that are going forward. Yes, I do believe that terrorism should be stamped out wherever it is, stamped out. But how do you do that? You know, Israel's got a rush in there. Innocent people are going to get killed. More innocent people are going to get killed. I don't know that the conflict in the Middle East is ever going to be resolved. I only wish that the stronger nations of this world can somehow get together and find a peaceful solution. It's very hard to deal with terrorists, people that just think differently than we do. They don't have the same moral compass as us. They act on a different plane. You know, it's hard for us to understand that. It's hard for people that have a heart and soul and a conscience the way most people do, understand how they think. They're on a whole different plane. Many of them don't have regard for, for human life. Many of them will sacrifice their own lives, okay? Many of them. So understand, they operate uh, on a different plane that we do. So how do we resolve this? People, I don't have the answer. 
Nobody here in the United States has the answer. I will tell you this, and I have to say this, um, and you can call this politics or what. I am extremely concerned about these terrorists being in our midst here in the United States. We have an open border. The Border Patrol will tell you point blank so many gotaways, they don't know who's in this country. They don't. And so because of that, I am telling everybody, be on your guard. I'm not trying to, you know, strike fear in everyone. We have a life to live and we have to live our lives. But you gotta be conscious and you gotta be aware of your surroundings. Women, children, please. I have instructed my children, my daughter, you know, you got to be aware of your surroundings because we don't know who's here. You know, and the terrorist organization, the Hamas, they called for, you know, worldwide jihad. I don't think it happened, you know, but not yet. You know, maybe it was a decoy for something that's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know. But people be aware of your surroundings because we don't know who has entered the United States. This is not a political uh, mention that I'm giving. This is a fact. I have spoken to Border Patrol agents. There are probably 100,000 gotaways, people that have gotten into this country over the past two and a half years that we don't know where they came from or who they are. That's a fact. That's been told to me off the record, on the record, whatever, you want, whatever way you want to put it. Are all of them terrorists? God forbid, I hope not. But are they in our midst? Yes. Do we have enough intelligence in the United States to try to subvert anything that they might be able to, they might be trying to do? I sure hope so. It's going to be a lot of strain on law enforcement and our intelligence agencies to be careful. But, you know, I feel that there's going to be an act of terrorism in this country. I, I just have to believe that. Don't want to believe it. Don't want to scare anybody. Uh, but we have to be aware of this. So, you know, in summary, what am I saying? Let me be clear on this. Let me be very clear. Any conflict, any conflict anywhere in the world that involves the murder of women and children and infants and adolescents of any ages, I condemn. I condemn it. I wish there was another way to resolve this conflict. And that goes for any human being on this earth, whether they be Jews or Palestinians. I'm against it. I don't know what the solution is. I don't know if there's, if there's enough reasonable people governing in this world that can come to a consensus on how to resolve this conflict in the Middle East. I don't know. How do we stamp out terrorism? I don't know the answer to that. I think we have to be on the alert and, and pray as Christians. We pray that God somehow provides a solution by getting into the hearts and minds of the people in power and the people in control. Our church had a, uh, a, pair, a prayer vigil tonight at 5 p.m., praying for the conflict in the Middle East, not only for the Israelis, but for the Palestinians also. We pray for all people that this conflict can be resolved without the you know, unnecessary burdens that it's put on human life. So that's my position on it, people. Um, you know, we pray to God that somehow, some way, this is resolved and that it doesn't lead to a world war. Look, if other nations get involved in this, who knows where it could go? You know, unfortunately, there's a lot of hatred in this world. I believe, without a doubt, it's spiritual warfare. I see it happening in the United States, and now it's expanding. Well, it's always been all around the world, but now it's becoming so obvious, so prevalent. Um, we just got to pray. You know, and people that they're prayer warriors pray because God does answer prayer. You know, most people that are of Christian beliefs thinks that, uh, you know, the time is coming. You know, the Bible predicts Jesus return. And a lot of people think that the end times are near. I don't know. Jesus himself tells us no one knows when that hour is going to come. Only the Father. We don't know. But it certainly does look like things are heating up to a degree that's just unbearable. You know, it really is. So... People, I hope you understand my position and, you know, pray for it. And, and for all those of you out there, you know, that say, you know, gas the Jews. I mean, come on, really. Or, you know, stamp out the Palestinians. Come on. You're a human being. You have a heart. You have a conscience. You have a soul. You want to gas people again? Are you the same people that deny that the Holocaust ever existed? Stop, okay? What's going on in the Middle East right now is real. Babies are getting murdered. Women are getting raped. Palestinian people are getting displaced. They have no food, no water, no homeland, no place to go. They're traveling on the road. Some people had to grab their mattress and walk along. They don't know where they're going to sleep or where they're going to eat tomorrow. You don't have a heart for these people? Whether they're black, white, red, Palestinian, Israeli, Italian, Jew, what's the difference? They're human beings. That's how I sum it up, people. So, you know, let's, uh, 
Let's pray. And you know, I just want to add this one thing. I see what's going on in our universities and um, how anti-Semitic, you know, most of these uh, young people seem to be. That's not helping the situation in any way, shape or form. And you know what? I'm going to tell you this. People that are doing that, they're cowards. They're cowards. Because if this, if this terrorism was at your doorstep, if somebody was coming at your doorstep with a knife, if somebody was going to hurt you, your loved one, your child, your wife, your husband, your relative, you'd be screaming at the top of your lungs for help. So who are you to be screaming that other people get slaughtered? You're a coward, in my opinion. I've seen death and it's ugly. And for those of you that are screaming to see more, you're putting yourself in the same position as a terrorist, except that the terrorists have seen it, you haven't. So stop, it doesn't solve anything, it doesn't help anything. You should be praying for peace. You should be praying for people to get together. You wanna to scream that at the top of your lungs? Okay, but gas the Jews, kill the Palestinians? Come on, you're cowards. And you young people, you haven't seen anything yet. You don't have a clue where you're coming from. You're an embarrassment to all of us here in the United States to do that on our universities. And if any of you professors or educators are out there encouraging this type of behavior, shame on you. You're a bigger coward than anybody that I ever knew. Cowardice, grow up, get some humanity about you, okay? Because you'd be the first one to run and hide, okay? If anything like that occurred at your doorstep or in your town. I wanna to see if some terrorism, God forbid, comes to your college. I saw one Jewish girl crying because people are attacking her. What the heck does she have to do with anything? Born here in the United States. You're cowards, cowards. Grow up, have some humanity about you, have a conscience because you'd be the first one, the first one to cry for help or run and hide if this was at your doorstep. Had enough, I had to end with that, I'm sorry. People, how do I always leave you? Same way, be safe, and boy, I mean that more now than I've ever meant that before. Be safe, too much unrest in this world. Be healthy, and as always, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, God bless all of you. God bless the people of Israel. God bless the Palestinians. God bless everybody involved in this conflict, and let justice prevail and let justice be done. See you next time.